Hi, welcome. I'm Maria from Read Fine Books, and this is the Philosophy of Reading book tag. I've been tagged here by Joseph Francis Burton, and if you don't know him, head over to his channel. He has the most amazing videos on George Eliot. He is determined to read actually the entire collection of her works and he's doing videos on each and every one of her piece of writings. Those videos are so entertaining and fun. So if you love George Eliot or want to know more about her life or her writings, head over to his channel. He's been on YouTube for 13 years now and that is amazing and awesome and I can't even comprehend to do something for so long and with such passion. So head over to his channel. Uh, I'll link it in the description of course. This tag is an original tag by Brandon at Brandon's Bookshelf and uh, let's get into it. What's most important? A good character, plot or message? So, um, I think, I think I've read some books with great plots uh, and great messages and they haven't impressed me all that much. I think characters are the most important thing when you read something. I think the characters shape the message. If you have great characters, you actually develop an awesome message because, um, because creating a great character actually has to make you see the world better actually has to make you understand something about yourself better and that is always always what you want from books to get a deeper understanding of yourself and you can do that with great characters great characters meaning characters that aren't completely good or completely evil complex characters make you discover yourself because they are flawed they perhaps try to improve or perhaps make awful mistakes but mistakes you can um, uh, understand yourself or make you uh, reflect upon your own mistakes upon your life so great characters are everything sure you have to have these characters do something you reveal a character's personality only by his actions you cannot just describe it so creating a good character means in the end creating good action and creating good message because of course this character has to represent something and good message in a book i don't mean good versus evil i mean a message that resonates with the one who's reading a message that uh, you can debate not necessarily be in uh, agreement with that message but a message you can understand a message that is well communicated so i think creating a great character is the most important thing but that cannot be done in isolation so yeah that is my opinion uh the next thing is should one read books about ideas or opinions they disagree with most definitely i don't know who would answer differently here one should read even more of what you don't agree with because um, it will help challenge you it will help develop your own ideas the thing is in today's culture it is very difficult to find a person with whom you can debate 
actual ideas and i think debating is kind of a lost art because there are too many personal attacks when you debate everything is so so personal ideas have come to define us in a way and that shouldn't be the case ideas should flow freely ideas should be in an ideal world changeable they should evolve within a person uh, that is what philosophers have taught us in the beginning that debating and changing your ideas evolving your ideas is the way to grow as a character and you can't do that if you don't see the other one's point of view um, and you also can't do that if you hold on too strongly on about your ideas you can't debate an idea if you think that idea defines you so it is always difficult to debate ideas and it is always difficult to hear another point of view but that is what makes it all the more important of course i think i hope i made myself clear uh, the answer is of course yes uh, as tech advances what do you think will be the role of books well i think it will be the same as it always been i don't see books changing uh, not really not profoundly changing i i don't know what future holds uh, tech wise i would most definitely love something like Ma matrix where you just get a chip in and uh, instantly understand uh, how to do karate <laughs> but i think reading for pleasure will never change uh, listening to audiobooks now will never change this has become a habit in itself i think the world without books would be sad uh, i can see this on my kid he's a two-year-old and whenever we read he gets excited about things he knows at at two years old he actually knows the words in the books i'm reading with him and these things shape his personalities i can see that i i see how exposure to screens makes him a little more aggressive and how exposure to books makes him a little more creative i see this every day and uh, that is why i don't think books will ever change they kind of uh, help us become better people kind of um next one how important are summaries, review and art in your book choosing? So summaries and titles I think are the most important criteria I choose a book by. Um, I also listen to a lot of reviews and uh, these small reviews that uh, don't actually uh, spoil anything in a book, I consider them more like summaries but or blurbs yeah i think those influence me too um, they actually let me know this book is out there and i do search more about it before i buy it but um i i think those things are very important the art yeah the art um i don't care about it so next one should one ever skim or scan a book well yeah of course one should especially with non-fiction it's quite quite important if you have if you have access to a summary of a non-fiction it can actually tell you if the book is worthwhile 
um, if you read fiction, of course, don't spoil yourself the ending. Reading fiction has the purpose to entertain you. If you know the ending or or spoil yourself, why would you do that? What's the purpose? But for non-fiction, yes, most definitely you should scan the book, skim the book, read the summary, read the main points, find whatever this book is about and more importantly find if the book is based on actual uh, real studies and how much of it is uh, actual evidence or not how it is received by the peers in that field reading non-fiction has a totally different purpose than reading fiction so with non-fiction it is actually a must to be informed before you read something just so you don't waste your time should reading always be enjoyable well <clears throat> again fiction and non-fiction yes fiction should always be enjoyable but i enjoy a good cry for example i enjoy uh, seeing characters suffer a lot I enjoy it I actually feel a lot better after reading a sad book <laughs> so enjoyable is a very relative term for non-fiction well I don't know if a book is boring you may have to read it because of your job be, or because it is too important for the field you're interested in if you don't have to read a book uh, it most definitely has to be enjoyable is it important to be well read well there are so so many books uh, are you not well read if you haven't read any book of plato but you have the gist of Plato's um, main ideas are you not well read just because of that are you not well read if you haven't read all the classics can anyone read all the classics they are done um, are you not well read if you haven't read the latest non-fiction book are you well read if you only read non-fiction and haven't read any classics so <laughs> i really cannot say what well read means but uh, is it important is it important for whom for yourself you define yourself what well read means for you is it important for yourself to be very knowledgeable in your field of work of course in your field there shouldn't be books you haven't read there shouldn't be ideas you don't know about but that comes with time it takes years and years of reading and discovering things in your own field to say you have a well enough grasp on the large things but you can never go so deep into a field unless you become a doctor in that field and do your own research so this is such a difficult question i i have no idea what to answer to it if it is important for yourself you should go ahead and read those books you feel are the most important that will make you well read but i don't think anyone cares that is the that is the main point here i don't think anyone cares anymore what well read means there was a time when well-read 
meant something, <laughs> gave you a kind of a status, but those times are gone and that should be the case because we have we have so much knowledge so much information at our hands at our disposal now that well read has lost all its significance what is your book buying process oh i don't know if i have a process Whenever I see a book I'm interested in, I buy it and that is it. There is no more thinking about it. I mostly read on electronic devices, either on my Kindle or on my phone. Whenever I want something that is usually an ebook already with it. So I just buy it. So how do you use what you read? Well, I'm not sure I do, uh, not consciously. I use it mostly to have conversations with my husband. We love to talk about books that we read ourselves. Uh, he has different tastes than I do, so it is always fascinating to have a conversation with him but i'm not sure that was the purpose of the question i feel it's more like how to practically use the books i read mostly fiction these days i do intend to change that a little bit in the next uh, few months read a little non-fiction but Seeing that I read mostly fiction these days, there's nothing actually to put in practice other than big philosophical ideas to ponder on. I don't think I use the books. I let them change me and shape the way I think. But that is kind of it. Oh, I skipped a question. What is your reading process? Mm, I do take notes, highlights, that's why I really, really enjoy um, reading on my phone or my Kindle. All these notes go into my Notion. I have um, files for everything I read just so that I have some ideas that stay with me. Um, I have a reading journal as well and there go the best ideas from the book but actually a reading process not sure if I have any these all these happen after I read something while reading I only take notes of what I like and highlights and that's kind of it if you could download a book to your brain, would you still read? Oh, yes. If only I could download books to my brain. Yes, I would still enjoy reading because it is time with myself and I enjoy that. I enjoy the actual process of reading, of staying with a page and think about what's happening there think about what would i do if uh, what would i have done in that situation i love that process about reading so yes i would still read what are your views on rereading a book well i don't usually do that I do it once in a while, but it's not something I usually do. I choose to reread maybe five books a year, maybe. That's the most I've reread in a year. But there are books I read such a long time ago. I'm not sure they even count as rereading, but because I don't remember the most ma basic things about them, I only remember 
big ideas or how they made me feel. So uh, yes, uh, I love rereading things that I have read a long, long time ago, but I don't exaggerate with that. I reread uh, a limited amount of books, a very small amount of books, actually, and mostly classics. What makes a good book? What makes a book good? There are many good books that uh, influenced me in various ways. I think the best books are those that um, impact me, either emotionally or in the way I think. They either change my ideas or my emotions. And if they provide a good topic of conversation, they are even, even better. So, uh, what makes a book bad? Well, a bad book is a boring book, a book that uh, repeats itself a lot, that uh, uh, has bad plot, bad characters, a book that doesn't bring anything new but that isn't entertaining either. If it's just something you read to pass the time, but it's bad even at that, that is a very bad book. If it's just entertaining, well, not so bad, not so good either, but uh, bad books in the fiction department are books that uh, have the same ideas as books I've already read and don't bring anything new. Because let's take Rebecca and Verity. You have uh, main points that are the same, but each one of these books has its unique uh, selling points, has its unique perspective on some things, and I enjoy them both even though they have so many things in common. On the other hand, a bad book in the non-fiction department can produce a lot, a lot of uh, bad things. Meaning, uh, if it's something that is not very well um, researched, if it's something that exposes opinions as facts and it misleads you this way, if it purposely misrepresents statistics, for example, or misrepresents opinions as facts, that is terrible. That is a very bad book. How do you feel about not finishing a book? I don't mind it if I have to, but I prefer to finish the books even if they are not perfect. They have to be very, very bad for me not to finish them. So I usually prefer to finish and rant about it than not finish. But I did happen to come across books that were simply a waste of my time so I did not finish them. Should the author's personal life matter at all? Well, that is a difficult question indeed. In history, the author's personal life has been used against them a lot. So I'm very weary about saying that the author's personal life should uh, matter. It shouldn't. In an ideal world, it shouldn't. However, it really, really depends on the subject of the book. Because, for example, in Romania, we have corrupt politicians a lot, a lot of them. Uh, these corrupt politicians sometimes get caught. That doesn't happen very often, but when they get caught, they feel it's a tragedy. And 
for them, of course, it is. They end up in jail, and in jail they start writing. Would I read any of their books? No, I wouldn't, because I knew why they are there. I don't believe they should be in the public life anymore. I use their personal life against them. <laughs> so yes, I will not spend my time reading what a corrupt politician thinks. But, uh, is that right? I'm not sure it is. I am aware a person can do something wrong and then regret it, uh, but I actually think that some politicians here need a little more humility and uh, need to be taken out of the public life. So becoming authors doesn't do that and I choose not to uh, help them in any way spreading their ideas. In general, however, yeah, I would say someone's personal life shouldn't matter and the book should be judged in its own merits. But books and words are so powerful, I'm not sure that is possible. All the more if a book is non-fiction and uh, the words there have the possibility uh, to spread and influence more and more of your life, yeah, maybe, maybe be aware of the interest behind writing that book. What I mean to say is that in an ideal world, the personal life of the author shouldn't matter. In this world we're living in, it definitely should, because you should be aware of the interests uh, that exist behind the words you're reading. If you could only read one genre for the rest of time, what would it be? Well, definitely classics. I think there you can find anything you want. Wisdom, uh, stories, classics can make you cry and they can make you happy. They can change your personality, your ideas. They can do everything. Classics are my go-to forever and ever. Do you ever read a book without knowing anything about it? Sure, I read, uh, I read I'm glad my mom died <laughs> only because of the title and I had no idea of the story behind it and I'm not sorry at all, it was an awesome book. What author, genre, series or culture can you just not get into and why? Um, so genre, I think, I think horror, I maybe read one or two books in the horror genre and I just don't, don't really like it. Psychological thriller, yes, but horror actually with blood and stuff, no. And I do like them in movies or series. But in books? Nah, I have a much too vivid imagination for that. So the next one. Do you think everyone should read and why? Everyone should read, of course. I think um, this is in part why I love to talk about books. I think the most wonderful thing would be to inspire someone who doesn't read to read something. Um, reading changed my life. I think it can change everyone's life. Um, reading is an escape in a way. Of course, reading for information is absolutely necessary and I can't imagine how one goes through life without reading uh, for their 
for their jobs at least that but more than that reading for pleasure changes the way your brain works changes the way you view life i can't imagine my life without reading and that's why i can't imagine anyone's life without reading and i know i know there are lots of people who don't read and i find that so 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 sad because in reality they have no idea what they're missing out that's kind of it we ended in a kind of sad note i think um i'm sorry about that mm. however i would like to tag some people if they haven't done it already i'd love to hear the answers to these questions from uh, some booktubers i follow and these are uh, heather from heather's heroes and heroines uh, flossy from the grape jelly library chatty the mad chatter and uh, sean holt i tag all of them i hope they do this tag but of course no pressure i love answering these thank you joseph for tagging me i so so enjoyed your video and uh, that is it i'm maria from read fine books thank you for watching